Claire Reed is a former assistant U.S. trade representative for China Affairs and joins us now. Thank you for being with us. Um, you know, no breakthroughs, but that certainly uh, seemed to be the expectation. So what is your take overall on what was, if anything, accomplished? Well, I mean, to understand what it really means uh, for economic relations between the two countries, I think we have to start with a reality check. Uh, China and the U.S. are going to be competing with each other hard in almost every arena, with the U.S. now under no illusions regarding China's goals. China wants to be preeminent and free of U.S. constraints in spheres of influence from geopolitical to economic. And this is frequently a win-win competition, contrary to how China likes to portray it. Someone gains and the other loses. And also, she believes it is imperative to have control over all the actors in China to ensure the Communist Party's survival. So in the economy, control easily trumps pursuing economic efficiency and economic growth. So that's not the most encouraging environment for business. Um, so those those facts really have to be looked at when you then look at what happened in in the um, in the meeting. It's okay. clear that both sides want relations to calm down, at least for now, because they have plenty of other issues to deal with. And there's no major upside in escalating short term tensions. Yeah. Is it your expectation that anything could follow this that would be more constructive when it comes to the relationship between the two countries as it involves commerce? Uh, that's a very good caveat, because as it involves issues like climate change, for example, the, both countries want to demonstrate leadership in the global system on climate change, and they need to because they're very big actors in that space. But no breakthroughs um, in this meeting, uh, no breakthroughs. Um, pandas, uh, but, but no, no <laughs> commerce. You know, China, China did uh, what it often does. It, it gave back what it took away, like agreeing to start up again the frozen mill-to-mill -mill talks. And then it gave something that didn't hurt China in any way, curbing the fentanyl precursors. But uh, the, there were no agreements on the commerce side, no agreements to curb supports for Chinese domestic champions, no change in Xi's goal to sharply reduce Chinese reliance on foreign products and services. Um, you know, China needs high quality investment and trade from the outside in some sectors for now because it's still developing and China needs raw materials. So she said some nice things to the CEOs and maybe you could take more steps to shore up those activities. But we need to be skeptical. You know, frankly, foreign players in China's market need to sleep, I'd say, a little restlessly at night. Uh, they need to see that they are tools for China's development and they will be discarded as soon as they're no longer useful. So they need to make strategic plans to hedge over time, in my view. So, Claire, no, no real talk of tariffs. And I know you were at the USTR and, and the Biden administration has chosen to stick with the tariffs of the Trump administration, something that, that China has complained about in the past. Why are those tariffs still on? Are they accomplishing anything? Well, one of the one of the processes that's underway at USTR that's supposed to be completed by the end of the year is a review of those tariffs to see which ones um, are sort of strategically helpful in terms of our national security concerns and possibly looking at, you know, shifting around how uh, the overall tariff burden works. But there is a political reality in the United States that we need to be aware of, where in some quarters, uh, any kind of reduction in tariffs um, on Chinese goods is seen as, quote, weakness. And so we have to take into account those domestic political pressures, even if they don't make the most sense from an economic perspective.